Hey guys, it's your girl Megan James, and you are now tuned into the Hollywood Group Chat Podcast. Period. And we have a very special two guests today. We have Denzel, Mr. Broken Bones. Um, I know you guys have seen him around all the blogs, the news, uh, just about everywhere. He went from 5'5 five, five to 6 foot with leg lengthening surgery. And we also have a very special guest today. I'm not going to start. Um, what do you want me to call you on here? Daddy. Fair enough. He goes by Daddy. <laughs> Fair enough. Dre um, Dilly. I don't, that's so weird, calling you your real name. <laughs> that's wild. <laughs> okay, we got a co-host, guest host, goes by the name of Dre Gilly um, today for this segment. And I guess we'll get started, right? I'm ready. Okay, so Denzel, where are you from? I'm originally from Southside Chicago. And let us know how you grew up. Like, are you an only child, oldest of three, two, one? Let us know. I'm the oldest of six or seven. Six. I'm the oldest of six. Mm -hmm. So initially, I was somewhat of an only child because I grew up in Chicago with my grandmother until I was about 12. Oh, me too. And then when I moved to Georgia with my mother, I was introduced to my siblings and was no longer an only child. Okay, so you grew up You grew up basically an only child. I grew up an only yeah, child, initially. too, from 12. That's cool. So how was your childhood? Did you grow up in the hood? Yes. Suburbs? So uh, I grew up. And uh, I grew up uh, in Southside Chicago, like I said. It was, I don't remember much from my actual childhood up until I moved to Georgia and where I really started to find myself. But uh, even when I moved here, I lived a good majority of time in Leela Valley until they tore it down, the Leela Valley apartments. Mm -hmm. Question for you. With you saying you don't remember a lot of that, why is that? Do you think it's trauma-based or is it just something so, that you just put away? There, there's bits and pieces I remember, but all I remember is bad growing up. like. Uh, my father and uncle and most of my family were like in gang related activities and I, I just don't remember much except for the bad things and I try not to like paint that picture of myself so I don't think about it too much. So was it a lot of like gang violence? Was it drug yeah. abuse? Was it so, um, like what was it? Some of my family sold drugs. Uh, my house that I, I actually was living with my grandmother, people would be looking for you know my family, the house would get shot up, things of that nature. Uh, I think on, if I'm not mistaken, two different occasions while I was a kid. I was just a scary little kid that didn't know what was going on. Uh, I was actually, which my dad doesn't know this, but because of things he did, I was actually shot at as a kid, like as a little kid that had no idea what was going on. How was like your like adolescent years, like I'll say like middle school, high school years? I actually grew up rejected up until about eighth grade. I grew up pretty rejected by my father, by family. I didn't have really any friends. I what was just kind of- What do you mean by that, like rejected? So my father was one of those fathers that was in my life, but he wasn't in my life. Like uh, he would actually walk past me on the street when I was living with his mother, my grandmother. He would walk past me on the street and act like I didn't exist. Or like somebody be like, hey, ain't that your son? Cause I'd be calling him like, dad, dad. And he'd just walk past me. And it, it hurt, it hurt to my core. And my cousin tried to explain to me that, oh, your dad's caught up in all this stuff, so he, he acts like you're not his kid, so you don't get caught up. But this is something that continued when I moved to Georgia, like not really taking my calls, still not really dealing with me. He's never really like been present in my life, but it's weird because he's always been there, just not active, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. he's, he's accessible, but he's not an active yeah. part of your life. Yeah, pretty much. So it, well, how's he like with your siblings? He only has one other child now. Mm -hmm. uh, she's only 13, so we're like 14 years apart. He's a bit better with her, still kind of figuring the whole dad thing out because he just got full custody of her uh, maybe within the last year. So he's still figuring the dad thing out, but he's actually giving it a go this time around. He feel like he made a mistake with me. Mm -hmm. So like uh, back to school and like you yeah. say that you were being rejected. Like so I, I was just, I was a weird kid. Like I was a weird kid. I was a loner. Like I was rejected. I didn't really have any friends. Uh, so growing up in Chicago, I always got bullied and beat up by the older kids, like by the middle schoolers while I was in elementary school. Every single day I walked home, they would get out before us, wait for us to get out. I got beat up every single day. Mm -hmm. And I got bullied at school too, like in, in, uh, in a little recess playground area. I got bullied every single day and things didn't really changed for me until like I came to Georgia. I learned to defend myself a little bit better because my 
uncles and cousins would beat up on me because I was just a soft kid. Mm -hmm. So they would beat up on me and they made me a little bit tougher. So that kind of got me into self-defense. Once I came to Georgia, I was fighting all the time, which is when kids stopped picking on me so much. And maybe around eighth grade is when things really started to turn for me. Like I was a little bit better with friends uh, and it just kind of progressed in that fashion. I was a little bit more popular in high school, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So I can, I can attest for somebody who grew up in Chicago, I spent a, a large part of my childhood in Chicago and it is a lot of bullying that goes along with that. It's a lot of kids who, who, who pick on you and it's a rough city. Do you think that that played a part in you feeling rejected? Do you think it was the city or do you think it was something that was personal, personal with you to where I think you? It was, I think it was mostly, the thing that made me feel the most rejected was my dad. Like it's weird because even though I didn't really have friends or have like really anyone to kind of vent to, it hurt that my father was never there. Like even when my cousins and uncle was trying to teach me how to defend myself, how to fight, like they would put me in these situations where I had to defend myself. Mm -hmm. and. My father just didn't care. Like there's even a situation where I went to my father's house and my uncle is way older than me and he was trying to teach me to be tough. Like I said, I was a softer kid initially and my uncle was just beating up on me, man. Like beating up on me and he was saying, hit him back, hit him back. So finally I hit him back, but you know, uh, I, I hit him in the wrong area a little too hard and he lost it, like chased me. I ran into the bathroom, locked the door. He came, kicked the bathroom door down. My dad just sat on the couch and just chilled out. Like, mm. like I wasn't even, like nothing happened. So it's not even like the people, it was just my dad, man. Like the, the role that he didn't play in my life, like yeah. affected me up until my adulthood. Oh, you said that uh, once you got to Atlanta, like things changed, like in what, in what ways? So you said you started to make more friends, you took self-defense classes. Uh, did it like boost your confidence level? Like in, in what ways did things change for you? Unfortunately, which is how I ended up getting to the point of like where I've been like journeying on mm -hmm. the last year, unfortunately, once I moved to Georgia, I became someone different. Like uh, like I said, when I first got here, I was still kind of a weird kid, I guess, like just a loner. I didn't know how to talk to people. I didn't know how to make friends. Mm -hmm. And I was the new kid. So I remember as soon as the first day I walked in a class, the first day I walked in a class, this girl just goes dog face and everybody starts laughing. I'm like, man, new school, same old, you know. But that same girl ended up trying to get at me later anyway. But like I said, as I, learn to defend myself. What actually happened, what made me more of a popular kid is I got jumped by a group of guys and I stood my ground because at this point I was taught to be tough. They were actually looking for a guy that I was cool with mm -hmm. and they ran down through the neighborhood looking for him. He took off running. I stood there because at this point I was taught don't run from anyone or they'll keep messing with you. And it was older kids again. So they came and they pretty much jumped me, but I stood my ground. Next thing I know, I go to school and that's kind of when the popularity started for me but it also was a downhill turn in my life because that's when like that's when i got involved in gang violence because now i was accepted now i was a part of something i was finally not the weird kid you moved to atlanta things mm. started to change kind of for the better kind of for the worse because mm. you finally uh, started to get accepted and then you started getting into like gang violence so mm. go, go go from there so basically with the whole gang violence thing i finally felt accepted uh, things turned for me, like I also kind of started coming into my looks around this time because before I didn't really know how to take care of myself. But I finally started coming to my looks so I got a little bit better with girls. Uh, I was accepted by guys because of gang violence. And this road just led me further down a darker path because at this point I didn't realize it but I lost myself because I became what other people expected of me because now it's finally cool. Like I never felt the things that I was doing on the inside but I started getting into a lot of trouble doing things just to continue to uphold this facade that I created for myself because the whole gang thing was an accident. I literally got jumped by some the pe the gang that I became a part of rivals and then next thing I know like I'm a part of their gang. I so it was it was real stupid how it happened. But anyway, I got really close with the people I was working with. I started getting in trouble and I started like being in and out of like juvenile a lot and that continued for me. So Eventually, the last time I was locked up, I was locked up for a little bit of time where I realized, I was like, man, it's not for me. Like, this life is not for me sitting in this cell. Like, bro, this is not who I am. So I made a promise to myself because I got out. I was on probation. I got locked up one more time after that. Uh, I got up. So I, I could say what this was. The, uh, the last two times I got locked up, 
was for Grand Theft Auto and Breaking and Enter. That was the last two times. Then uh, I was on probation. I pretty much wanted to change my life. I was on house arrest. I told my PO if she lets me work. By this time, I'm like 17, eight, 18. I told my PO if she let me like work, I'll go to work every day. So she took me off house arrest, but I was like being monitored or something. Like somebody would come check on me like right. every so often. How, how old are you now? I'm 27. 27, okay. So uh, other ahead. question, other question for you. Just with hearing all of this trauma and all of the stuff that you have from your backstory, how do you think that affected your decision that you made for today? So my decision to actually get limb lengthening started last year. And like, it's called limb limb lengthening, lengthening yeah. Okay. So it started last year. I was in a dark place in my life. I was uh, like, I fell back into a dark place. Uh, I was kind of a, I was a drug addict and I was deep into alcohol and I was like living a life that wasn't for me again, uh, all because I fell in with the wrong crowd again. So I kind of found myself praying for a better life every night, but I wasn't putting in the work for a better life. So. I sat to the side and I asked myself, what really do I want? What really do I want? And the truth was, I wanted to be the best man I could be. All the things that I was doing weren't me. You know what I mean? So. And when I, you say the best man, what do you think that incorporates? Like, what is the best man for you? I mean, for me, man, I want to be the best I could be mentally, physically, spiritually. Around this time, I got deep into working out. I got deep into fitness. Like, I got deep into meal prepping, eating right. I stopped drinking and I stopped smoke. I stopped drinking and smoking and some other stuff. And I fought through that for months, cause like. And we talked off off the camera, and you yeah. you told me that you struggled with um, substance abuse for a while, and mm -hmm. that you had a long period of sobriety. Yeah. So this, how long did you deal with substance abuse, and how long has the sobriety been? So unfortunately, uh, I dealt with substance abuse for about two years, and I just got worse and worse. But uh, I've actually been sober as of Sunday, a year now. Congratulations. Thank you. So like I said, I, I fought through all that stuff. And Everybody who is free from substance abuse, for sure, shout out. Yeah, I fought through all that stuff. And basically I was like, I want to be the best person I could be, man I could be mentally, physically, spiritually. I always felt like I was destined for something greater. So I gave those things up and I got deep into like fixing myself. Mm -hmm. But it just so happens my only insecurity since I was a child was my height. And another part of that had to do with my dad. My dad always made me feel small because he's large. And uh, so he's, that's what I wanted to ask yeah, you. Yeah. How tall are your parents? My mother is 4'11", my dad is like 6'1". Okay, and you felt some type of way because your dad was bigger? He, he was bigger, but he made me feel small at every chance he could. Mm. Like no matter what I accomplished, no matter what I did, and I've accomplished some amazing things, he, he just, never, he's never once told me he's proud of me. So let's get to the nitty gritty. Do you feel like you did the length, the length, limb lengthening operation because of your father solely? No, I did it, like I said. Babe, you just answered this question. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Sorry. No, I, I was saying, no, I, I did it because he had a piece to do with it. He actually, like people think it was because of women. I actually haven't struggled with women since like 19 maybe, but he had a piece to do with it, but mostly, like I said, I just wanted the most life could give me, which I understand taller men have much more benefits. And like I said, height was my only insecurity. So I wanted as much as life could give me. I want, the, I want as much money as I can make. I want to be the best version of myself. I want every single thing you have to offer. So what benefits um, do taller men have? So I can say it was all hearsay prior. Uh, I was told, obviously, taller men are more confident. They're better with women. They have an easier time in life. Uh, they're more successful in the workplace. They get more respect. Since undergoing this procedure, I, I was always like, once I was in the military, I was well respected, but I always had to earn it every mm -hmm. single where I went. But once I kind of became a military man, I was well respected. But now, since undergoing the surgery, like, I, I get respect everywhere I go. Like, women actually, and I don't know if it's because I went viral or what, but women actually have been going crazy since I underwent the surgery. Like my DMs go crazy. Uh, women approach me in public, which I've only actually been approached, like instead of me approaching maybe twice in my life prior. Mm -hmm. Do so, you think it's the, the height or do you think it's the stardom of what you did? 
a lot of people are telling me, like a lot of women are telling me it's my confidence. They say I radiate confidence, but mm. I, I don't know what I'm doing different. <laughs> I'm just women, women love men with confidence. But the thing is, I don't know exactly what I'm doing different necessarily. I'm just, I literally just chilling. For the first time in my life, I'm comfortable just being myself without caring what other people think of me. Maybe that's what you're exuding is just the confidence that you feel now. And they're picking up on that. So how much did this procedure cost? Uh, it's so in a, in the states, it's you went to Turkey, right? Yeah, I chose to go to Turkey because it's much better there. Uh, in the states, it's like one hundred fifty thousand for both, like to do both. In Turkey, for both together, it was like eighty one thousand dollars. Eighty one thousand. Eighty one thousand dollars. Yeah. Eighty one thousand dollars. You don't yeah. think you could have bought something else to make? people be like yo I'm fucking with him to make you feel confident it wasn't about them it was about me it was, it was about, about the way I saw myself mm -hmm. I don't care how other people see. did you see yourself short I did I saw myself as like I saw myself as a small man even though I would put on a lot of weight while I was in the military I still saw myself as a small man and do, I hated it do you know the average height in the United States five nine it's five seven I think it's five nine it's five nine it's five I'm sure nine. you know I'm not gonna question you I'm it's sure five you nine. researched it's it five nine, nine. Mm -hmm. So, and you went, what's your height now? Six foot. You pretty decent, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Like, you was, pause. You pretty tall, bro. Like, when I seen you in the outside of this, and I was like, yo, you pretty good height. The funny thing is I almost went for a third surgery until I saw how tall I was after the second one. After the first surgery, I was like five, nine and a half. Okay, explain to us how this length, limb lengthening thing works. So, is it like a little rod that just could keep stretching if you wanted it to, or what? Not, it, Technically, but not exactly, because your body has limitations. So basically what happens is they break the bone, they put a rod in the bone, and then they put a device outside the leg that connects to the rod in your leg, and you turn a key on your leg, and it, like, stretches the rod in your leg outward. So what about, like, your veins and arteries? They um, all stretch, too. Everything how? stretches. So basically everything... the. The process takes three months. So it's, you do it a little bit a day. You do one millimeter per day. Miles was like 1.5 because I was always stretching and keeping my legs strong so it let me go faster. But you basically, uh, you're turning it a little bit every day so that your body has time to adjust and keep up. And is, what is, when you turn the key, what does that do? It just, there's a, the rod in my leg, it lengthens it. It pulls so it apart. So you're turning the key to make it a, a millimeter and a half. Why, longer. Yeah, longer every day. And how, I did. how painful was that? <laughs> and, and did you stay in the hospital throughout this process? I was in the hospital for the first 10 days. But then after that, I was in a rehabilitation center. So uh, you're in a rehabilitation center for the three-month period. For me, it was six months because I did surgery twice. But yeah. In Turkey? In Turkey. You did wow. it twice? I did it twice. Did you have to pay twice? Yeah. 160 something? No, no, no. It's... In it's Turkey, 80, it's 40,000 oh, 40, per surgery. Oh. Yeah, okay, it's 40,000 per mm -hmm. surgery. So how long has it been since you have completed the surgery? How long has it been? A month. So you're like fresh out. Mm -hmm. So at, will you ever be able to like walk normally? Absolutely. Will you be able to run? Absolutely. How I long is the process? So for most, it's six months to a year after they finish the process for me. You see me walking like with no support, with nothing. Um, my process has been very expedited because I spend eight hours in the gym every day uh, retraining my legs. You said eight hours? And yeah. what are you doing to retrain your legs? Like what rehabilitation do you have to do? So now it's all on me. Before it was physiotherapy where they stretch you, they like train, they teach you how to retrain your legs to walk because you actually lose the ability to walk for the first couple of days. Then as you relearn to walk, it's all about like getting the muscle back in the legs. So. Now, I, I just work out legs like normal. The only thing I can't do is like squat heavy weight. I can squat, just not heavy weight because my bone is growing back and there's only a rod holding my like leg in place right now. So what's the long-term effects of this? So- Because they cut your legs in half. Yeah. So- You had your legs cut up. Both, <laughs> up, upper, lower, all six bones in my leg are broken because I did surgery twice. Usually hey. most people just do upper leg, but- uh. So basically, the long-term effects, possible effects, if you lengthen too fast, uh, you can cause permanent muscle or nerve damage, or you can uh, possibly, as, as studies say, you might develop arthritis, or you heighten the risk of developing arthritis, which I'm not worried about that. So what about your um, leg to arm? 
proportions? So fortunately, I had long arms. I had the arm, my wingspan was that of 5'10". Oh, so you're pretty proportioned. Mm. What well, size shoe you were? Nine and a half. Oh, you almost, you almost got a six foot nigga size <laughs> shoe. <laughs> oh, God. My question is like, I got to ask for all of the men out here. It's going to be other men out here who want to limb lengthen and all of that, right? Mm-hmm. Like, when was the last time, this personal, but when was the last time you had sex? Like, you can't have so, sex since the surgery? That's part, of, well, you can have sex. But uh, is it awkward? Because I see, like, when you walk, you still got like that. So, me, I, like I said, it's the same time I started my sobriety, I went, became celibate. So Amen. I've been celibate for the last year. Weak. Hey, it's part of my journey, man. <laughs> okay. I promise God. You're dumb because some people, like, he made a promise to God that he was yeah. getting rid of everything that, like, well, was a distraction or so, yes, would, I promise. Not, that was not God, of God. It wasn't necessarily that, but it, it, was, it, it wasn't necessarily that wasn't of God. See, it was just you can't more take so, him serious because all he cares about it is It was sex. more so, uh, I promised God that if he helped me get to where I want to be in life, I would give up the things that I desire Period. most for a year. I Like, I could respect you for that. Yeah. Cause like when you fast from stuff, God blesses you with with more. My life has been nothing but All blessings right. since I began this journey. Question: You cut off your legs. Mm-hmm. For me, right? I'm somebody who went from a shorter guy mm-hmm. to a, cu- a taller guy naturally, right? It wasn't really much that changed for me other than me hitting my head, me being able to get recruited for basketball. It's like you know, like I I don't know personally because I I am who I am, mm-hmm. so. What do you think has really changed over the fact that you're taller? The way I see myself has changed for sure. Like, I've always been somewhat confident. Like, I could turn it on and off. Well, I could turn it on when I needed to, Mm -hmm. which is, like, I could turn it on when I absolutely needed to. Like, I could stop caring about my one insecurity. And once I I dress the way I want to dress or drive what I want to drive, I have a lot. I had a lot of nice stuff. So once I did these certain things, I could turn my confidence on. But... Now, like, man, it's just like, I, I just, I'm just happy to be alive. I don't care much about what people say. I don't care what people think of it's me. It's because it, whatever, because you know what? I get like a lot of like backlash because I've had like a lot of plastic surgery and people are like, well, why do you, why do you have this? Like, why do you do this? You don't need it. Like, oh, we, we miss your old face. Like, as if like people don't age, like, and it's just because like, I don't really care about what you think it's for me. It, like if it makes me feel good, I'm going to mm-hmm. get it. This journey taught me one patience and consistency. And two, what, like I said, I never cared what other people thought. It was about how I saw myself. Right. Why, why would I care if you telling me, like a lot of people tell me like, oh, you were amazing as you were, you look good. I, I wasn't happy. At, I wasn't completely happy as I was. Right. Now, that's real. I, like I said, yes, you can overcome insecurity. And yes, I overcame it for most of my life. But as soon as I found out there was an option to change it, I, mm-hmm. I booked my appointment the same day I found it. Like the same day I realized it was an option. And like I said, I was initially going to do it in America and they could only get me to that one. They were charging one hundred and fifty thousand dollars without a rehabilitation center. So I wasn't too happy about that. But two, they could only get me to five ten. So mm, man, why, why was that? And what there is a safety zone for this. There is a recommended safety zone for this surgery. So that so I now surpassed you went that. Out, yeah, you surpassed, I surpassed it. it. Yeah. What are the risks with that? Uh, sa- the same same thing that I named. Same pretty thing, much sorry. same risk that I named. It just heightens the chance of it. OK. So, so I just want to know what you do for a living. Currently, uh, I'm retired military, but I'm working on getting into music. Oh, cool. Us too. What type of music? I rap. Oh, that's dope. What, what type of um, metal or material did they use for the rock? Steel. Steel? Mm-hmm. Not like titanium or nothing. It's just straight steel? Steel. So do you, um, when you go through the airport, is the bus? Mm-hmm. No. Really? I don't know how. I don't know why, but no, it doesn't. What? You got clear. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. Clear. You still have to go through the security. It's clear. Yeah. When you get clear, I, I don't clear. buzz at all. I don't set off the alarm. I don't set off any metal detectors. Really? Yep. I don't know how. Is it even metal? Steel is metal, steel. right? Yeah. Are steel you are metal. you single? Yes. I've been I actually had a girlfriend before I went to do the surgery, but I realized she was holding me back in life and when I she was holding me back from all the things I wanted, from music, from I when I told her I wanted to do the surgery, <laughs> she she didn't support it at all. In what ways besides that? So the thing about this girl, she she initially came in my life because I've been with a good majority of women. But I, I so when I say I've been good with women, I've always been good at getting women, just not keeping them. Because 
my like for some reason I, I was weak as a man, which this process has strengthened me as a man because I read a lot about becoming a better man. And, and I realized I was like, man, I was too emotional. I depend, depended on women too much, like all that type of thing. So I could get women, just couldn't keep them because I was self-sabotaged. But with this particular girl, I never had a woman truly support my dreams. So my dream has always been music, but I doubted myself so much. I was actually doing medical school before I decided to do music full time. Uh, with this particular girl, she met me when I, after a little after I did my first show and she like promised to support me, promised to be there, and that's what I lacked. It's mainly from my father. That's all I ever wanted from my father. But obviously I sought that out in women and just never found it. Well, this one promised all that. And she was there in the beginning, but as I started to get a little bit better and get more into trying to get more booked for more shows, she hated it. She hated it. She always wanted me to stay home. She always wanted, and she was bad for my addiction too because I only got deeper and deeper into it. And the thing that hurt me the most is my music had no substance during this time because for me, I care a lot about what I say. And when I, I would always be drunk, always be high, always be going off something. And I would be so disappointed in myself at the end of the day. Like I couldn't even focus in school because I was still in school at this time. I couldn't even focus in school. But anyway, so she, she didn't encourage me to do better. She encouraged me to do worse. She like, I'd be like, oh, I kind of want to stop these things. And she would kind of push me into it. Even got to a point where I started selling drugs and all type of stuff like, and it just wasn't who I was, man. But when I told her I wanted to do the surgery, she was completely against it, completely not for it. She hated the idea of it. Why? She, want, she said I was perfect how I was. That was her thing. But I told her, I was like, I I'm, wanna be the, I told her about my journey. I told her I wanna become the best version of myself. And I told her all the areas I felt like I was lacking, which like I said, I, I opened up a little bit too much to women but she didn't support it at all. And I told her, this is something I feel like I have to do. Like, I feel like I have to do. It's been on my heart heavy. Like, because it wasn't just about the height, it was about the journey and whole. What people don't realize about me is the height was only a small portion of what I've been working towards this last year. Like, it's, it's only a small piece of the puzzle, but yeah. So after she wouldn't support me and refused to come with me to do the surgery, because I asked for her to come with me, I, well, we stopped talking after that. And then I went to do the surgery on my own. So um, you told me that you had a daughter. I do. Um, how is being a dad, like, you know, dealing with your daughter through your surgery? Um, is, it, is it hard? How old is she? Like, how's that going? She, she's seven, and it, mm -hmm. was uh, it, was, it was very hard. It was very hard, like, being away from her for six months. But I also was in the military and done deployments, so it was kind of she was used to it. So it, it wasn't too hard. We talked every day. Me and her mother have an okay enough relationship to where our co-parenting is very good. Mm -hmm. So it, it wasn't too hard. But when I came home, I actually uh, decided because it's, it was kind of hard to take care of her and like recover. So that's how I ended up back in Georgia because I wasn't living here. I'm living, I'm living here currently with my mom until my daughter goes back to school. Then I'll be moving back to my home mm -hmm. just because I needed that extra support with my daughter. Mm -hmm. So, um, like, where do you see yourself in the next five years? Like, what, uh, what do you, where do you see yourself? Me, look, my ego is through the roof. But I, in the next five years, this year is going to be the year I make my music career take off. Like, I'm going to gain some leeway because I've been up and down with it. Like, I'll quit. I'll get back into it. But this is going to be the year because I refuse to give up. Uh, I see myself doing a little bit of motivational speaking here and there because it's something that I've gotten really familiar with and... A lot of people apparently have begun to look up to me, aside from all the jokes that initially started. Now people see more of my personality. What were and, the jokes? Oh, man, the jokes was hilarious. I thought they were hilarious. I, uh, I haven't heard them, so I wonder. I like man, them. look, they, they didn't ask me all type of stuff. It's, uh, weren't you concerned about other stuff growing, too? I was like, <laughs> not really. I was like, it wasn't a concern for me because, uh, yeah. Like you six feet, but yeah. you still got the rest. Yeah, like, so people were talking about that. They was talking about, like, Oh, uh, T Rex arms. <laughs> they were saying, I'm not like, I never you. walk again. I said that before. You can't. I said, hold on. So he was five, five, went to six feet. What about his arms and his shoe size? Yeah. Like, everything just be, worked out. It just, it just, it worked. just worked out. And I'm not going like, to lie. I mean, to you, you can see my proportions here. I'm not going to lie to you. When I saw you, I was like, it looks like I've, you look like you were supposed to be six yeah. feet. No lie. Like, so you look like you're supposed to be six feet. People were telling me they hope I never walk again. They told me I don't love myself. I've always oh, loved myself. What did you, you ain't say nothing back to them? So in the beginning, I would reply because it was 
funny to me. I was yeah. sitting in the rehabilitation center. In the beginning, I would reply, but then I was like, this is not who I am. Like, uh, I don't want to have people, I don't want to ever be influenced by people again. I don't pe want people to influence who I am, what I do, because this is a cycle that I've repeated throughout my life because of that fear of being rejected yeah. that initiated from my childhood. So I don't ever want people to determine who I am or what I do again. So I stopped replying. Occasionally I read them and laugh for enjoyment, but I, it's no need for me to spread further hate. Like these are people that just don't understand me and my story. A yeah. lot of the jokes had to do with like, oh, like if you couldn't get women at five, five, you can't get women at six foot. And I was like, what people don't a different aura now. What people don't understand. It was is, never about the women. It was never about the women. Because you was getting them. But people don't understand. And I think a lot of men get confused because a lot of men DM me like, man, like they talk to women crazy on my page. Like women like, oh, you look great at 5'5". Five, five. And the dude's like arguing with women on my page. Like, oh, you wouldn't have dated him at 5'5". Five, five. You would have laughed in his face. I'm like, men get confused. I was like, you don't need all the things you think you need to attract women. I was like, the best thing you do is become the best version of yourself. It's not about money, it's not about height, it's not about looks, because they're uh, poor, not attractive, like all these different type of men that have no problem getting women. But my thing is, I'm like, the type of women you think you have to be a certain way for, that's the type of woman you attract. Mm -hmm. That's what I believe. And I'm glad that you've been able to take your own self-confidence from this situation and feel like, like to, to say to the public, like, I didn't do this for women. Yeah. You know, because, one thing in my mind is a taller male. I'm like, well, maybe he did this to get some bitches. Like, maybe he did it to I, get some bitches. I understood that being taller would, like, attract more women. But what people don't realize is I, I've been turning women down this entire, like, throughout my entire process, throughout my mm -hmm. entire journey. Because this last year has been dedicated to me. I think whatever God <laughs> has for me, like, no one can stop, like, my relationship with God. And I'm... People, uh, I get a lot of crap for this. I'm not really a Christian. I have no religion. I just believe in God. Mood. And I, hmm. Me too. Yeah, I just believe in God. Uh, my faith is in God and my faith is in myself. That's it. Uh, Christianity held me back from the best version of being myself. And I, I hate to say it like that, it, but it held me back at, because I always felt like I was doing the wrong thing. I always felt like I was fucking up. Like, I never felt like I was good enough. Like, mm -hmm. I, I went to church, like, church never really felt like it was for me. But I know the things that I've prayed for, every single thing I've ever prayed for in my life has come to fruition. So I know there is a God. Mm. Mm -hmm. I just don't have a religion. Do you have anything coming up? Like, can you? Are we getting like any books from you? Any anything cool that you want to tell the audience uh, to look out for? So, apparently, I'm a influencer on social media, which I, I which just is found totally out. cool. Yeah, which <laughs> I just found out from social media. But with all the buzz like going around with me getting the surgery, I plan on like exploding my music career this year. I am working on a book, and I'm working on like. Uh, YouTube and stuff like that, trying mm -hmm. to get content out. The whole content thing is new to me, so I'm figuring that portion out. The most important thing to me is music. Cool. Look in the white camera and just tell everybody where they can find you, your music, your Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. So I have currently only Instagram <laughs> and TikTok, but you can find me at Mr. Broken Bones with a Z instead of a S, <laughs> and also Big NTK with two Gs. Period. What's your rap name? Big NTK. Okay, cool. You, do you have any music out on like Apple iTunes or anything that we can no, listen to? No, I only put out one video as of right now, but I have over 200 songs like just waiting in cache that I'll be dropping this year. Okay, mm. cool. Mm, 2023. Look Period. out, oh, yeah, BTK. What is the rap name? Big NTK. Big, Big NT NTK. Big yeah. NTK. Yeah. Oh, look know. out, 2023. Okay, cool. Well, thank you so much for coming. We're really excited to have you today. Thank you I for was really me. happy to hear your story. Oh, for sure. I it got a dope. lot of insight for sure. Okay, well, it's a wrap.